Hey everybody, it's Doc Green, the Rose Scholar, coming back out here with another video. If you notice, I'm wearing my dart hat again. Um, did wear it in my last video because talking about things that had nothing to do with dart and didn't want to get dart involved in anything, but not really going to talk much about dart on this video, except a little, yeah, a little bit. Guys, I've been doing a lot of videos on trucking and financing and financials of truck drivers and everything, and these videos also translate into other industries. It's not just trucking, but I kind of, I'm a truck driver, so that's what I do. So that's what I talk about mostly, but you can put these same kind of financial advice into all of your other jobs or anything else that you might be doing if you don't do trucking. I will say, I want to talk a little bit about um, Dave Ramsey. Uh, most of you have heard of him. If you haven't, go look him up. He's a, he's a guy who tries to get people to live debt-free lives. And I got to say, I, whenever I became debt-free, life got much better for me. And so I, I do, I promote a lot of his his, his type of thinking and his types of uh, disciplines on here, but I also have some issues that I don't think Dave Ramsey, since he has never really worked in trucking, really understands. And I know, first of all, let me tell you, owner operators that own your own trucks, this is going to be about lease purchase. Do not be getting on here talking about you're getting robbed, scanned, or whatever. It depends on what you're looking for. Anyway, that's this. That's when we get that out of the way. Dave Ramsey talks about um, never going to debt for any reason. So he would not approve of me having a lease on my truck. The only reason he says you have any kind of debt is if it's a mortgage on your home and you pay that off as quick as you can, which guys, if you watch my videos, I believe the same thing. Here's the reason I think Dave and I have a disconnect on as far as leasing goes. At the time that I went into leasing, my credit sucked. Okay, I, I got out of debt a few years ago. Um, so when I went to drive for Dart, however, my credit was good. Could I have went out here and bought a truck from a, a car lot or something? Yes, I could have with a huge down payment. Didn't have the money for that huge down payment. Money was tied up in other investments and everything. So I went to work for Dart, and I've had a great time here. <clears throat> Dart has several different ways that they pay you. You can get paid uh, a percentage of the run on their contractors, or you can go OPI, which means you find your own runs on load boards, uh, basically the spot market. And then they have uh, where you get paid by the mile, a guaranteed salary per, or guaranteed load amount per mile. I have done the per mile thing at first. I switched over to percentage when it was doing really well. And I stuck with percentage till here about a few days ago. I went back to per mile because freight rates are dropping and everything. And I can make more money running the guarantee per mile right now. That's what I'm talking about, guys, when I say you have to be flexible out here. You have to know when to switch, when to go back and forth, and, and, and how to maximize your income. Um, as far as me leasing a truck, why I would lease one when I could uh, uh, buy one from a truck dealership and get my own authority and all that. Guys, I've talked about this before. I'm going to say it again. I do not want to deal with brokers okay some of them pay you some of them don't uh you've heard we've all heard of, and some of the, some of these th some of these loads get brokered three or four times before they make it to a real truck driver so all the money you make is gone off the top um can you make more money if you have your own authority i'm sure you can but i'm comfortable and i don't have the stress of worrying about billing net 30 payouts or any of that stuff i make well over enough money to live my lifestyle, to invest my money in different ways, to invest my money in IRAs, to invest my money in, in stocks and, and mutual funds and things to where I don't need to be out here trying to make every dime. Because here's the thing, you will never work hard enough to make money as well as making your money work hard enough to make money. Does that make sense? I don't care how I can max my miles out on the top rate out here. But if my money is invested correctly, it will always make more money than me as a single worker, even if I'm working for myself, as still a worker, can make. Your money is your biggest and largest asset. It is a way for you to make money if you make your money make money. Okay? Um, my truck payments are made. I've never been negative on a paycheck for a week. Never. 
I will take a week or two off and I'll be back, or I take it up to 10 days off and I'm back positive within three days of being back on my truck. So for all these guys talking about you're getting ripped off and you're getting ripped off, I, I'm doing fine. My finances are fine, okay? So whenever I say, guys, go out here, do a lease program if you want to, run the numbers. I always tell people, make sure they have at least 5,000 in the bank before signing a lease. Some of you listen, some of you don't. The ones that don't uh, end up getting in trouble most of the time. They call. That's okay. We can still figure it out. We can still figure out how to get you back in the black. It's just going to be a little bit harder. Okay? Um, people go, well, if you need the 5000 that means that, that something went wrong and you didn't make money. And so you have to be lying about that uh, going back out and being back in deposit three days after taking 10 days off or whatever. No. Here's why. When I have the money, like I had the money in the bank before I signed my lease, I've never used that money, but it's there in case I do. But I can promise you this, had I not had the money there, something would have went wrong and I would have went negative. It's just the way it works. Karma, the universal laws, whatever, the, 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 the Murphy's law, whatever. I just know that if I don't have the money in there when I do my lease, something's gonna go wrong. So that's the reason I tell drivers, have 5,000 in the bank before you sign a lease. I know the money looks good when you're hearing the recruiters talking and everything, but things can go wrong. Stay a company driver. Learn how to manage your finances. Learn how to manage trucking. Learn how much money you need to make, how many miles you need to make. Calculate it up as if you were releasing a truck while you're still running as a company driver and figure out, can you make it? But here's the thing. If you cannot make enough money as a company driver to pay your bills, become debt-free, and save up $5,000 in the bank and have a three to six month emergency fund built up, if you can't do all those as a company driver, you're not ready to be a lease purchase owner. You're not ready to be an owner operator, period. I don't care who argues with me or whatever, I'm telling you, if you can't figure out how to do it on the amount of money that the truck drivers are making doing company driving, you do not need to elevate yourself up to a new level that you have no discipline for. Discipline means a lot out of here. Self-discipline, okay? So a lot of guys, well, I just can't get ahead. I could make more money if I was doing lease and therefore I could save up the other 5,000 once I've been like, it. <clears throat> then you need to relook at your finances. Somewhere you're spending too much money on something if you cannot save up $5,000 and a three-month emergency fund as a company driver. If you can't do that, you need to go back and look at your credit card debt, student loan debt, child support, uh, how much your house is costing, if you got a car that's costing you too much, if you're living outside of your wage range as a company driver. Because when you switch over to a lease purchase, doesn't mean you're gonna make a ton of extra money because you gotta pay taxes out of it. You gotta do all, the only thing, the only real advantage you have over a company driver when you're a lease driver is at the end of three years, you own your truck. Or whenever you do your payout, you own your truck. That's really the only advantage of, of, of money-wise of being a lease purchase driver. Now, once your truck is paid off, yes, you're going to make an extra couple of, you know, extra four, five, six hundred dollars a week, which is great because you're still set up in a position to go invest more better and go on vacations, and enjoy your life better. But you are not ready to be a lease purchase driver if you cannot figure out how to maintain your bills and everything as a company driver. You have a financial issue, not a money-making issue as a company driver. You're living beyond your wage. Some guys out here uh, have called me and asked me, you know, they, they were in debt when they started driving trucks, and now that they're not making enough money to pay off their debt, they're already behind and everything. That's because they got into trucking so they can make more money to get out of debt and everything. <clears throat> and I get it. I really do. Because I was in the same situation. He's as even, even, even. Even as a truck driver, I was in the same situation to learn how to live my wage. And guys, that is the biggest lesson you have got to learn is how to live your wage. Not your age, your wage. Learn how to live with the amount of money that you're making. Because if you don't get a discipline down where you're able to invest 15% of your money each week or each time you get paid into a Roth IRA, with mutual funds and foreign investments and and uh, which ones are safe, which ones are not, things like that. 
until, uh, until you got money where you invest 15%, pay all of your bills, have money left over, have a three to six month emergency fund built up and invest in other things besides trucking because guys, you're not going to be out here driving a truck forever. You might need to make some other investments in some other types of business. Me, one, I chose real estate. Um, I, I used to be a real estate agent for a while, so I know the amount of money you can make in that and everything. Well, the real estate market's crashing. I know the history of real estate. I know how it works. I know when it's going to go up. I know how it goes down. I know why. I know how the economy is affected. I've done research on all of this. And you need to do it also. I don't care how much money you're making as a truck driver and how good your life is. If something goes wrong, if you get into a bad accident out here and hurt yourself and you're not making any more money from truck driving because you can't drive anymore, how are you going to pay your bills next month? You understand what I'm saying? You need to diversify yourself. And you find other investments besides your job to make you money. The job is only there designed to help you get started. It's not made for you to live off of forever. You're going to have to retire sooner or later. Do you have a Roth IRA set up? Do you talk to your financial planner? Is your By the time you retire, is your house paid off so all you owe on is taxes, utilities, and regular bills? Is your IRA set up well enough to where it can pay you every month enough money to cover your taxes and your living expenses and your bills and your groceries? There should be no car payment because you should be debt free. You should be buying your cars cash. But does your retirement account set up well enough and invest into well enough to where it can take care of you for the remainder of your life? And I don't mean just so you sit up on your front porch and look at the sun. Can you travel? Can you enjoy your retirement? Can you spend more time with your family doing things, not just surviving, not just eating a bologna sandwich and then barely making it by? I'm talking about is your investments well enough for you to live for the rest of your life? Because it's going to happen. You're going to get old, so old you can't run a truck anymore, or you're going to get hurt, or something's going to happen, and you're not going to be driving trucks. So your investments need to be bringing in enough money and enough return to take care of you for the rest of your life. Older truck drivers, if you look at this video and you're behind on your investment, you may have to invest more than 15% of your income into uh, retirement plans and medical insurance and things. It's just because you waited too long to get your stuff straight now. I'm one of them. I have to invest more than 50% of my income. I also invest in real estate. I'm building a couple, we just bought some land, uh, or should be closing out pretty soon. We're going to be developing some houses on there. And I'm going to be either renting those houses out or selling those houses at a profit and reinvesting the profit back into either real estate and then taking some of that money, investing it back in more money into uh, other types of uh, income generating stocks and mutual funds and bonds and things like that. These are things you need to think about. Because you, especially you young drivers, y'all have got it made out here with the new ways you can invest online and everything and the amount of information that's available to you. You guys have got it made. I know some guys are going, well, I got the government's doing this. The government's doing this. If you're depending on the government to get you out of trouble, I don't care which clown gets elected. I don't care if it's uh, JoJo gets reelected. I don't care if Trump gets elected. I don't care if DeSantis gets reelected. It doesn't matter because none of them clowns are going to be able to help you. They can hurt you, but they can't help you. And they can only hurt you if you allow them to. You need to take care of control of your finances and quit worrying about what Washington does. You just need to make sure that you're making more money than what they're taking. Uh, anyway, that, that's some of the things I want to just get on here, get out there real quick and everything about the lease program and how much money you need to have in it and why you you need to save up money before you do a lease and how to get your finances straight. Guys, if some of you have questions about how to get out, get your financial life back on track, uh, you can watch some of my other videos, teach you how to list your debts, figure out how much money you're making per mile, all that stuff. I got other videos on that. <clears throat> Even teach people how to buy newer cars without using cash or without using credit. Um, some people look at me and go, so you took Dave Ramsey's advice and you destroyed all your credit cards. Yeah, I did. I have a few credit cards now because I'm investing in real estate, so I have to have a credit score 
So I have a couple of cards in my wallet that I will use to pay my monthly bills with. But as soon as they pay, I go right there and pay it off. Boom. Keep my credit score up. It's not really living on credit. I'm just using a credit card to pay the bill to keep a credit score up because I might need it for real estate. Other than that, I don't go out here and take my credit cards and go on vacations. No, 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 no. Debit card. Cash. No credit card. Uh, I don't use my credit card to go up here and, uh, well, my car broke down. I need to get a fee. Nope, that's what my emergency fund's for. That's why I have it. I'm not going to go into debt for that. Well, my kid uh, got, fell off his bicycle. I had to go to the emergency room. That's what I use insurance and emergency fund for. I don't use I don't use credit cards. No, 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 no. That's not what credit cards are for. Uh, I can teach you, and I will have other videos in the future, about how to use credit. Never have to pay it back. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds odd. It's really it's it. Well, you're paying it back, but you're not paying it back out of the money you work with work for. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to do other types of investments and stuff like that in the future. How to borrow money, leverage money, invest money to bring in more money to pay back the loans and still give you a profit. Those are coming soon. I just haven't got all that down in a, in a way that I feel comfortable about putting it on videos in order to teach you how to do that. Um, anyway, guys, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know it's boring. Not really a whole lot of trucker information here. Um, so I'm going to let this go. Have a good one.